everybody. My name is Jennifer Hooper. I am so glad you came out to join me on this very, very cold, cold, cold night. I was uh, saying that I'm not sure I would have wanted to come out and <laughs> I didn't have to be here. I am a life coach. Does anyone know what a life coach is? Has anyone heard of a life coach? Okay. Has anyone had a life coach? Does anyone know what a life coach does? <laughs> well, um, I will tell you. I basically earn my living talking to people and helping them. And I do that in one of two ways. I either meet one-on-one -on -one with my clients to help them achieve a goal that they can't quite figure out on their own. Kind of like we hire Adam to be our fitness trainer because we can't quite figure out how to accomplish our goals on our own. And I also talk in groups like this. I love giving presentations. I do tons of free training and events and things like that. So I'm always uh, talking to people and trying to offer them tools and strategies to help them get where they want to go. And I love being here at Adam Clark Fitness. I have known Adam for a few years now. And I've had several trainers in my life, and he is by far my favorite. And I'm not just saying that, it's true. I'm not lying. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think part of the reason why uh, Adam and I get along so well is because we really share so many common beliefs. There's a lot of, a lot of overlap between what we believe in terms of fitness and health and mindset. He just happens to go deeper on the fitness side, and I happen to go deeper on the mindset side. And so that's why we're here today, is to talk about resilience and why we need it in order to achieve our goals. So, um, so why do we need resilience? I'll ask you. Overcome adversity? Overcome adversity? Yeah, absolutely. Life's tough. Life's tough. <laughs> yeah. We want to keep showing up, right, in order to accomplish our goals. Sometimes our goals don't happen overnight. They're not really achievable in 24 hours or 48 or 30 days or six months even. Sometimes they go on and they take a lot of time. And sometimes we fall down and we need to get back up in order to achieve what we actually want to do. So we're here to talk about that getting back up part. <laughs> Let's actually look at the definition of resilience. Wow, this got taller. <laughs> you didn't think of that when you bought it on Amazon. <laughs> no, it's just, oh, it's got a spring in it too. Okay, here we go. I got it. Yes. No, it's a fancy. <laughs> okay, the resilience, resilience, the definite or definition is the power or ability to return to original form or position after being bent, compressed, or stretched. Has anyone in this room ever felt <laughs> bent, compressed, or stretched? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in my mind, this means both physically, in terms of our fitness goals here, but also emotionally and mentally. We really um, find ourselves sometimes challenged challenged in incredible ways. Life throws all kinds of stuff at us just because it's life. <laughs> and then also we have things that uh, we want to accomplish. I'm gonna, I do have some notes. I don't want to miss anything. So just let me peek at them before I keep going. Okay, so those times that you, were, that you have felt stretched beyond your comfort zone, how that feels sometimes. I'll throw out an example. Let's say you had a weight loss goal and you start off feeling really excited and really motivated and you're determined. In the first week, you're doing all the right things and you lose two pounds. And then the next week, you do the same thing and you lose two pounds. And maybe week three and four, you lose two pounds or maybe one pound, whatever it is. But then week five comes along and you're still doing all the right things. You're still eating right, you're still exercising, but the scale doesn't move. That happens sometimes, right? So that's week five. And then maybe it happens in week six. 
and week seven, and maybe even week eight. How are you feeling about them? Deprived. Mm. Anything else? Pretty good. So when you're feeling discouraged and down, frustrated, deprived, grumpy, hungry, and hopeless, <laughs> what do you do? Seven dwarfs. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> the rest of this with seven dwarfs. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love myself with food. That's yeah. what I say. Yeah. When I'm not feeling the love, I go ahead and love myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Drink? You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to release. Oops. Play around, not do anything. Just kind of Netflix. watch Netflix Avoid. for a whole vacation. Avoid is huge. Yeah. I know. Oh. Yeah, avoid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 was, that was not nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Another word for some of this stuff is to <laughs> buffer. We might, because we don't like feeling this way, right? right. And we want it to go away. And so we, we can buffer with some temporary behaviors like eating, scrolling through Facebook, mm -hmm. watching Netflix for hours on time, at a time, just sitting on the couch. It's just, we get a short-term dopamine hit to make these feelings, these negative emotions go away. Mm -hmm. right? It's very common, because we are human after all, right? <clears throat> so mm -hmm. here's the thing, is that we want to work on our resilience, because on week nine, if we've been doing everything right, we might drop four pounds, which would have averaged out to one pound the previous week, right? So even though we we are feeling this way, we want to find ways that we can kind of get back to that place where we started. So I repeated the, the definition of resilience, and when I talk, think about going back to an original form in terms of setting a goal, it's going back to this place of determination, commitment, and motiva motivation. Does that make sense so far? Does anyone have any questions? How do we do that, right? That's <laughs> the hundred thousand dollar question, and that is by managing our minds. Our minds and the thoughts that we are thinking require just as much management as our bodies and our fitness level. And so, I'm going to give you a tool that will show you a visual way of looking and exploring what is going on. called just a self-coaching model. I'm giving you a tool to coach yourself. So after tonight, you should be able, of course I didn't hand you any paper, so you can't take notes, but I'll give you my card, you can email me. <laughs> <laughs> um, this simple little model was designed by a woman, or created by a woman named Brooke Castillo. She's a master life coach. Oh, that's smart. Take a picture okay. of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're on that. Good thing. And I'm recording. Yeah. And then yeah, I'll post it. Look yeah. At. yeah, all right. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and 
Deborah Castillo, she owns the Life Coach School. She's a master life coach. It's, I get a lot of my training from her. <coughs> she basically looked uh, around at all of our kind of modern thought leaders, people like Tony Robbins, um, Byron Katie, Pima Chodron, and she, Abraham Hicks, and she realized they're all kind of saying the same things, like how to, you know, kind of accomplish our goals, but she whittled down all of their teachings into this one thing. So it starts at the top with circumstances. We have circumstances in our lives. Sometimes, and, and a circumstance is just a fact, and it's neutral, and it's something that everybody could agree on. It was neither positive nor negative. But our circumstances trigger thoughts. Now our thoughts sure can be positive or negative, right? And whatever we're thinking is going to create how we're feeling. And it's our feelings, our emotions, that determine what we actually do. So as we saw on the previous page, like when we're feeling discouraged and hopeless and frustrated, what we actually do might be overeat, give up, you know, kind of space out. And then, of course, whatever we do determines our results. So I'll just give you a little example, not fitness related, but circumstance from my life was that my husband asked for a divorce. So that's just a fact. This is 10 years ago. I'm over it now. <laughs> <laughs> so the circumstance was that he asked for a divorce. My thought was that this is the worst thing that could ever possibly happen to me. And I was absolutely devastated. I lost my identity as a wife and a mother for a long time. And so I was feeling unworthy. I felt like I just had no sense of worth. And so the actions that I did are all of the things that we talked about already. You know, I overate and I overdrank and I just let my brain spin in confusion and I, you know, the result was that it was the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> So the thing about the result, whatever result we, we get, it will always provide evidence to the thought that we're thinking. So somewhere along the line, I realized, you know, I made peace with this divorce situation, and I realized, well, huh, maybe it's not the worst thing, because now I've got a blank slate. Now I can recreate my life with a lot of intention and be very deliberate and very careful about how I create my life going forward. I didn't have to compromise anymore. <laughs> I got to choose. And so that thought of I have a blank slate made me feel empowered. It brought me some relief. And so from that place of empowerment, I made different decisions and I took different action. I went back to grad school. I downsized my house so that it was more affordable. I became very deliberate about who I surrounded myself with. I didn't want negative people. I only wanted uplifting people. And so the result was that I got to redefine my blank slate, right? which provided evidence for the thought that I have a new beginning, basically. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, my, my whiteboard gets even fancier. <laughs>
to myself, that our minds need as much management as our bodies. <laughs> In case you're wondering what that meant. All right. So for the sake of simplicity, let's run through some models. The C is circumstance. The T is thought. The O is action results. So give me a circumstance, something that you might be working on right now, something that's happening in your life, whether it's a fitness goal, whether somewhere else in your life. Chronic illness. Chronic illness. Yeah. Do you have a chronic illness? And so what are, maybe, I don't know, what, you, what are you thinking about it now? Uh, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks, yeah. <laughs> And how do you feel when you're thinking it sucks? Sad. Yeah. What would you do when you feel sad? Um, I lay down a lot, watch TV, or Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Netflix. FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not much. I mean, basically, that's what it is. Okay. Not much. Do you avoid things? Is that totally? Yeah. 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 Right. It's a, my not much words, so we get a half around the clock. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy. <laughs> and so, what is the result of lying down, watching TV, and avoiding? I feel sicker. I feel worse. Okay. So it still sucks. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it probably sucks worse. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it sucks worse. Yeah. So it's the result, because of course that's what you're thinking. Right. And so that is providing evidence mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the work is to find a thought mm -hmm. that is a little bit better, yeah. so that you don't feel sad. Yeah. So that you now here's the thing. Let me just, um, let's, do that. let's talk about emotions real briefly. I want you to think about them as steps on a ladder. And emotions and feelings I use uh, interchangeably. And what is an emotion? What is a feeling? I mean, we don't really think about that much, right? But all it is literally is a vibration in our body. That's all it is. And the ones that suck are low level vibrations and they don't feel good. And the ones that feel amazing, are high vibrating, that's joy, abundance, um, love. But down here, down at the very bottom, might be depressed, disempowered, um, hopeless. So when we're looking at our thoughts and we're saying, okay, so the thought is it sucks, <laughs> right? And um, so you said sad. Yeah. It's real hard to jump from sad to joy and just the thought. Like that's a little mm -hmm. much to expect. But what we can do is we can just sort of baby step our way. So what's something that's maybe a little bit better than sad. Um, <laughs> anyone, anyone <laughs> can join in. <laughs> Don't need to Maybe one. indifference. Yeah, indifference is oh, definitely better. better. All right. So now we can go back to example. Let's say. <laughs> Instead of sad, um, we're shooting for indifferent, which is kind of neutral. Yeah. That's another right. word, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you think of a better thought than it sucks to make you feel indifferent or neutral? Um, Anyone can well, chime in. I, your health is getting better. It's better than it was. Yeah. Right? It's manageable. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. 
<laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so it's you know it's manageable. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not managing it yet, yes. and maybe you are. I yeah. don't know. But you know that it's possible mm -hmm. to manage, right? So you feel indifferent. I'm going to put neutral. Somehow that makes me feel better. <laughs> Terminology. Uh, yeah. oh, exactly. It's just kind of a... It, yeah. <laughs> I like neutral better. Um, and so if you're just feeling kind of neutral, if this is a thing, I have it, do you do anything different? I do less of that and more just go to work, be with the kids, just the normal care stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you say you're more engaged? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Live life. Yep. Basically. Instead of avoid it. Mm -hmm. And then what's the result when you're more engaged and you're living your life? Happier. Yeah. Such right. less. Are you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true, actually. And are you managing it better? Yeah. provides evidence to your peers. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> What'd you say? It seems so easy. It seems <laughs> so <laughs> easy, right? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and that's what I love about this model is that for me, just the visual representation of what's going on because so often our thoughts just spin around and around and we don't even know why we're feeling the way we are. But it's always because of a thought. It's always, and it's not always a conscious thought. And the subconscious thoughts rule. Like we could say a positive affirmation all day long, but if we don't believe it, that subconscious thought. I like the idea of the latter too, because you don't have to go from being at your lowest to joy. If you can yeah. just creep up a little. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, mm -hmm. just... Like you say, 1% better every day. Yeah, just, oh, I love that. You know, that's, mm -hmm. I've been working on that since, since I've been here, but just 1%. Yeah. That ladder is good, because you don't have to get to the top, yeah. you just have exactly. to get to the next right. one. And that's yeah. what I always think like a positive affirmation is asking us to do, is asking us to make this huge yeah. leap all the time. Like, I'm the best! Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can I do anything! Okay. <laughs> like, well, can I? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I just want to be okay. Yeah. What? Today I just want to be okay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's okay. And somebody says, yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Totally. I find a lot when I'm in a circumstance of personality where I have a lot of other people feeding in, you need to. Oh. I hear you, you need to. And I have gotten in a certain circumstance of, I don't want to hear you need mm. to. Because when you tell me to wipe that out and just somehow make that disappear and go up to the top of the ladder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you feel depressed or frustrated or how yeah. can do you mm -hmm. need to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just mm -hmm. want people like they're very kind. <laughs> you know what? They mean well. <laughs> okay. I just But you time. also don't have to believe them. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's not mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. That's but that's really where you're hard. thinking, yes. which is where you're empowered can be really helpful. It can really be your friend. Do you want to share the circumstance or would you rather not? It's okay. Oh no, I'm divorced. <laughs> okay, no, I'm the divorce thing. <laughs> you need to. Well, yeah. I don't ever want to hear that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't let those words out. Yeah. Because I just can't make it happen. Uh, yeah. Divorce is no fun to anybody. <laughs> no fun at all. The power goes out. We'll keep going. Look <laughs> <laughs> at our cell phones. Oh, I was just saying. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are you thinking? Like you're hearing other people say you should do this. So what does it make you think? Hopeless. That's a I feeling. Mean, yeah. yeah I, I so just, the feeling is hopeless. I probably more was anger. Of I know I need to. But how do I make that happen? Criticize. Yeah. When people offer you it advice just, yeah, like that, it makes it not so easy. It makes it <laughs> it's yeah. really not that easy. <laughs> no, right, right. So it it's not easy. Whatever it is, right? Yeah, exactly. You can fill in the blank. All the things that people are telling you you should do. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah. So you 
feel hopeless and angry? And then how do you show up? What do you do? What is your action? Oh, what did I do? <laughs> sure. Ah, uh, grumpy. Okay, that's a key. Let's... Yeah, grumpy. Um, lack of control. Uh, and like food or... Oh, you name it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe overeat? Yeah, just everything. Never drink. <laughs> I've done that. Yeah. Um, avoid. <clears throat> yeah, I guess. I don't know. Buffer. Get some yeah. Down to. Yeah. Yeah. Do <laughs> everything. <laughs> All the things. All the things. Yeah. All, All the, the above. Things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. All right. And then, what's the result? Is it easy? that are here, or teachers, you find yourself telling your kids all the time, it's going to be okay, and you're thinking back in your head, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> yeah, you just I keep saying it, it's going to be okay, and then you have to flip back and listen to it. And yeah. So, you know, you said this for you. It's gonna yeah. Be so when you think it's going to be okay, do you feel better? Yeah, I mean, that's the indifferent, that's the hanging in there, that's the yeah. you know, that is okay. I know it brought me relief. Is that a feeling yeah. that you would agree with? Yeah. There is a tomorrow. The sun's still going to rise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I told myself that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then if you're feeling some relief, do you still do all the things? No. No. Nope. What did I you instead? I learned to paddleboard. Oh. Yeah. So you learned this? Learn something new. Fell off a lot. It's quite funny. <laughs> 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 when a boat comes up beside you and asks you. <laughs> that was one of my goals because I have no oh, balance. Oh, God, it's not as easy as they think. It yeah. was just to be able to stand there because I thought, this is going to be easy. And, it, and I had to think, <laughs> you know, and it was like just, and I'd kneel on it. And finally, I didn't really go very far, but I was able to. Get a place where there's good. no camps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a part of resilience, right? You you didn't like you fall off and never get back up. You got on and you kneeled. I, Maybe two true. knees and then one knee. And if I hadn't had somebody say, let's set a goal, I probably wouldn't have done it, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That, yeah. Unless I really got thinking of God, I need to get a goal here, <laughs> you know, and and that is something that, you know, otherwise, probably never done it. Yeah. yeah. Well, pat yourself so. on the back, though. That's that's pretty cool. I love to paddleboard. When and when you get the hang of it, it's a it's a lot of fun. Um, and even if you don't ever get the hang of it, it's still a lot of fun, right? You're you're still out there. You're learning something new. You might get wet, but that's okay. With your friends, you're laughing. You, the balloon. 
<laughs> oh, don't break your neck. <laughs> so you you learned something new. You, you went paddle boarding. And then what was the result? <laughs> you up for one more? Sure. All right. Another circumstance. Anyone want to throw something out? There's a lot of goals over there. I see a lot of uh, things that people have been working on here. I'll do mine. Okay. Well, I probably gained like 40 or more pounds. Okay. I don't know if it was menopause, if it was. <laughs> so, so the circumstance is your weight. My weight. Your weight. Yeah. Which is totally neutral. Not to me. I know. I know. It's like what you're thinking about your weight. Yeah. You know, like some, some one person could weigh 175 pounds and be perfectly okay with it. Like that is their goal weight, you know, whatever. 175 pounds to someone else is devastating. It's because of the thinking. It's not because of the circumstance. This is neutral. So what are, are you thinking about your weight? Which, by the way, is just a number. No, I know. Um, like, oh my God. <laughs> that feeling like I never was this was you know and I never would just gluttonize myself on food mm -hmm. and why am I doing that mm -hmm. and so is the thought like I weigh too much I shouldn't weigh this much yeah I... just uh, uh, and just like um like it's not help it's not healthy for you, my joints and you get all those kind of yeah. aches as you get older and then it's not even it even gets to beyond like a vanity thing. It's like just like when I step on the scale, it's like holy shit. Yeah. I mean I weigh like probably twenty five pounds more than I did with my what any one of my three pregnancies mm -hmm. full term yeah. <laughs> yeah, exact and yeah. i and i had gained weight with those i mean i was yeah. all yeah so it's good it's like what is going on here so it's like i'm reading between the lines i think maybe the thought is i weigh too much yes That's and then the when thought. other people mention it there was an episode oh that never that helps no <laughs> and there was an episode I, it's some reason to be honest I'm really there was an episode of something that was kind of um, made kind of public and the man described me as <clears throat> the ample skirted woman and I bawled my head off yeah. I yeah. thought when did I become the fat girl yeah. and it hurt you know, I thought, oh, we're not even talking about this anyway. Yeah, that's, that's not even the point, but it it crushed me. So I'm going to put it out there so I'll be vulnerable. And yeah. Well, that's mean. Tell us who it was. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take care of it. <laughs> I don't want to give this No, person. no, you're not. Okay. No, honestly, I don't want to give this. This person is a very unstable, dangerous person. I don't want to give him a platform yeah, because sure. it's in the, yeah, it's in the so public and it was, you know, so... That's very hurtful. Yeah. yeah. Did I hear or sort of sense that you feel a little bit scared about it too? You mentioned um, whether it's good for you. Well, I felt I it made me feel powerless. Your weight is what makes you feel powerless, or what? And the hurt and the whole thing, yeah. like. We can, like, have mul we can, by the way, have multiple models happening a lot of times. Yeah, so you've got like, the model about your weight, then you've got the model you know, about what this man and said. And when I told 
you know, my sister, she laughed. She goes, you're a Canadian baker. It's my deal. Yeah. You know, but they yeah. thought it was hilarious. But I thought, you know, yeah. because they, oh, ignore it. And it's easy. Yeah. No, well, it's not easy. It's not easy mm. to ignore it. People don't want to tell you to do it. <laughs> so the action, I think, when I get like that, sometimes I either really withdraw or I think I almost, Almost, it's like, you know the people, I heard the term oppositionally defiant, it's like I do it worse. Oh. Uh, person, so, so I'll say, like okay, <laughs> McDonald's, here yeah. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. like I'll just say, you know, well then you can all get, or just, I don't know. Oh, I used to be the queen of that, oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Self awareness, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, that's the word. Yeah. And then what are the results of withdrawing, not participating, self-sabotaging, the drive-in? I feel um, like I'm not, the, like I don't have the results I want and I'm not the person yeah. that I want to be. And you and still not, weigh too much. That's the result, right? Because you're self-sabotaging yourself with the drive-in. Exactly. Yeah. always clearing things. What could you think instead? Or what, you can, you can do this model in any order. You can start with how do you want to feel instead of hurt, or you can start with you know, what could you think? You know, it's beautiful. And I wouldn't go to from I weigh too much to I weigh exactly because you know it's not true. Yeah, yeah, You're not yeah. going to feel it, right? But you can think something like, I can learn. I can take care of myself. The hard work is worth it. Those kind of thoughts. Do any of those feel good to you? Yeah. I don't know how to stop the thought from coming in to begin with. Mm. These thoughts. Yes. Yeah. Like when they say, well, don't tell yourself a negative thought. Well, I'm not really thinking I'm telling myself yeah, that. Yeah, right. It's yeah. just kind of popping in there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Sometimes we can just choose something that's so neutral just for a place to get our brain to focus. Something like, instead of I weigh too much, you could just think the thought, I'm human. It's a fact that you can get on board with that you can believe that's gonna make you feel better than hurt. I'm human, I'm okay. Or you could, you could say something like, um, it's totally possible, someday I won't weigh too much. Or I'm 1% better. 1%, <laughs> I love that, yeah. Today I'm 1% better. When you feel empowered, what do you do? You engage. Mm -hmm. You come here? Come up here. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to get back at. <laughs> Anything else when you feel empowered? That's enough. You're engaging in the world around. And when you do that, sometimes it, <laughs> what's the word when you prioritize and sometimes the things that 
really we thought were such a big deal don't turn out to be a big deal yeah. when you feel yeah. better yeah, like that. Yeah, that's so true. Oh, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. And then when you're taking care of yourself and you're engaging, the result is that you're 1% better. Right? Seems like a lot of us, I, I know I do. I shouldn't say a lot of us. Prioritize based on what somebody else is telling you. Yeah. Rather than yeah. what I truly do. Again, it's back to you need to and you should. And right. And because we go. believe all the other people. Yeah. yeah. I know with my kids, I have, I have an old aunt that's in her 80s. And I was thought with my kids, I was being so helpful, saying, well, you should. You don't. You don't until I was saying, and then they tell me that. <laughs> and I was saying, and she said, you know what? Unasked for advice is criticism. And I started Ooh. thinking about that, and I thought, well, I'm not a critical person, so I'm not going to, so now, so don't criticize yourself. Oh I've never, never thought, thought of it. Like yeah, that. that's so And she's good. like in her 80s, and that was, so that was true. like, wow, that's how did you over. get so yeah, smart? That's true. Because she said, unasked for advice is criticism. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's good. That's so yeah, that's really true. true. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've given you this tool to sort of explore what's going on in your brain and really shine a spotlight on what's happening in there. And here's what happens if we don't do that, right? We bend until we break, we feel tight, we feel constrained, and then we stretch until we snap. We lose our resilience. We don't keep showing up for ourselves. <laughs> what do you think about that self-coaching model? Is it helpful? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's simple. Yeah. It's That's very simple. We all, you know, it's not like, we all want this, not us here, but a lot of people, we want that, that easy solution. Well, nothing's easy. Right. Like anything... Like, uh, these goals, they're not easy. If they were easy, then you wouldn't probably wouldn't put them out there. Right. Um, you could do them by yourself, and it wouldn't be a big right. deal. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So. Simple but, and easy are not the same thing. Right, right. So yeah. this is simple. What we do, like, I try to break things down and simplify things mm -hmm. for everyone because there's a lot of stuff out there that it's like, what do, yeah. I, do I believe this? Do I believe this? Do I believe this? Because we get bombarded. We get bombarded yeah. by our own thoughts and our own brains. We get bombarded by other people, what they think we should do. And we get paralyzed and don't do anything. Yes, we just exactly. Sit there and like, it's a uh, whole set of self I just that won't even do anything. That's like me watching Netflix, picking a Netflix thing. There's too many choices. I know. <laughs> yes. yes. I just I like the one not, show. I end up not. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. restaurants yeah. that have very few choices. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I get totally yeah. overwhelmed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
certain result. Be intentional with what you're thinking. Become hyper aware of what's going on in your brain. I may have said this already, but I'll say it again. Our brain loves to tell us lies. You're not worthy. You've never done this before. Who do you think you are? You're never gonna do that. So you become hyper aware of what those thoughts are and change them. Ask, is the thought tr even true? Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who cares if I've never done this before? I could, you know, did Steve Jobs ever say, I can't, I can't create the iPhone, I've never done it before. Right? <laughs> I mean, you can yeah. think about roads, think about cars, we've never done it before. Who cares? Do it anyway. <clears throat> Even if something is true, ask, does it serve me? Does this thought serve me? And if not, drop it, get rid of it completely, or just replace it with something better. Just find a way to get up that emotional ladder. Just one step, just one step. And try to stay steady on that step. A lot of times we scurry down, we scurry up, and we scurry down, and we scurry up, and we're exhausted. What if we just have compassion for ourselves and say, you know what, today feels sad. And sad might be better than depressed, so I'm just gonna hang out here for a little while. And then maybe tomorrow I'll try to get to neutral. You know? And then practice, practice, practice. This takes repetition and this takes time. This is not a one and done kind of thing, managing your mind. Mindset is ongoing. If you really want the biggest bang for your buck, you have to practice. So um, some of that practice looks like, um, like if we go back to the models that we did, we sort of had a before and after thought. And the, the afterthought always made us feel better. Find a way to cultivate those new thoughts. Find a way to like, just write them down on paper. Put little reminders on your phone. Put sticky notes on your desktop or your refrigerator or something like that. Find a way to practice that new thought because what, really, what you literally have to do is rewire the synapses in your brain. We want to, um, Oh, our brain always wants to go back to default thinking. It wants to go back to what is it's wired for, for what we have trained ourselves to believe. It's really hard. It's not hard. It just takes work. <laughs> it's not hard work to rewire. So when I give presentations like this, I find that there's generally three types of people in the audience. There are the people that sit there and say, that makes so much sense in the context of this workshop, I get it. And then they go home and they never think about it again. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who look at the model and they're like, oh, okay, I got this. I can practice, I can do it myself. There's all the tools that you need. I've given you a great tool to use and you can use it all on your own. You have a great starting point to start being very deliberate and conscious about what you're thinking. And then there are the people who <coughs> want to do it, but they can't quite do it on their own and they need a little bit of help. So if that's you, reach out to me. I'll be happy to talk to you. I'll give anyone a one hour consultation, doesn't cost anything. Email me if you have questions. Um, I love helping people. I love engaging. I love this work. I just think it's so powerful. This is what we went over today is just one of many tools that I use um, with my clients. I'm gonna pass around this uh, sign-in sheet. If you want, you can <coughs> check the last column and um, I'll add you to my email list. I try to send out a weekly email. I do, I do tons of free training. I do um, speaking engagements like this, lots of events. I have an event coming up you might be interested in on March 14th. It's gonna be six to eight at Evan Rude's in the private room in the back. It's called How to Keep Your Cool When You Feel Like a Hot Mess. <laughs> um, you can <laughs> find the link on my website. I'll pass out my cards too. And um, everything
requires ten dollars to hold your seat. I can only take eleven people, and then that um, the money, those proceeds, I'm donating to an organization called Girls Right Now, W R I T E, which empowers underserved uh, young women to get their stories out to the world, which I feel really passionate about. And then on the night of the event, you would just have to pay for your sound dinner. So I would thank you so much for joining me tonight, coming outside into the cold. Oh, I even finished five minutes early. That is the fanciest thing I've ever seen.